So what I, we've got a couple questions here, so I want I want to make sure we 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 get to this piece before moving on to the Q and A. I know we're coming up to our hour here, but what do I, what do we need to know when I'm, when hiring a pen tester? Like, what is the what are the what are the kind of the filters that I should be looking at? Yeah, so I guess I'll jump in on that. You know, um, you should be looking for experience, right? Uh, a career in penetration testing naturally leads into also becoming a good security consulting and seeing the bigger picture, right? An experienced pen tester is going to take note of any other vulnerabilities that were identified along the way, but may not have been used as part of their attack path during the actual penetration test. Uh, so, you know, an experienced tester is thinking ahead and, and saying, if they don't fix this vulnerability, then it very well could be likely that I exploit it during the next pen test or even worse that uh, this company has a breach before then and a real attacker exploits it. So I'm going to point that out to a customer, right? And even though I may need to reduce the risk rating because uh, there are bigger fish to fry, so to speak. Um, I'm also going to explain it to the customer. I, like I've literally told clients, I rated this as a as a moderate because it wasn't exploited in my attack path. So it's hard for me to justify it as a higher risk rating without knowing uh, for sure the potential impact. But if it's not fixed, then it's definitely something that's going to be on my radar next year. Um, you know, as, as far as uh, skill sets, I mean, they should align with the project in hand. So ask for a professional bio and ask yourself, is this, is this a match? Certifications are great, but as Kyle said, don't be fooled by alphabet soup either, right? <laughs> um, some certifications are much easier to obtain than others. Um, it's also good to know what they did before become pen, becoming a pen tester, right? Were they a defender? Were they a sysadmin, a network engineer, you know, or a software developer, right? Personally, I think having some of that type of experience, that IT background, um, definitely brings something to the table. Um, as, as a former sysadmin, you know, I know all about time management and wearing multiple hats. So when I'm, you know, um, putting together my findings, you know, I'm looking at risk, but also, you know, prioritizing uh, what you can fix quickly and, and, and what would have, you know, the most impact from closing those security gaps. Uh, as far as questions that you should ask, you know, again, um, ask about their experience, ask for a professional bio, but I also think uh, it's important to ask, to key in on questions that maybe the pen tester didn't ask, right? Um, so if you're asking for a web application penetration test and you're shopping this around to a few different consulting companies and they haven't asked for a demo of the application, you know, to me that's odd uh, because how are they scoping it? Uh, the more questions that they're asking, I think the, the, you're in better hands, right? And it, it's kind of funny because I, I'll end up asking a lot of questions um, and sometimes clients, especially new clients, will actually think that this is some kind of like social engineering tactic for me. Where at the end of the day, like I really just want to make you sleep better at night, right? So if I ask you, you know, what's keeping you up at night? What is a worst case scenario? I have my own ideas of what your worst case scenario is, but I shouldn't make any assumptions. Um, but some people might, you know, take that question as, oh, well, they're asking me for what systems to attack. That's not it at all. Like I said, I, I just want to make you sleep better at night. You know, and at the end of the day, you know, we, we want to deliver a partnership, you know, and not just a report. Um, and that's when you know you're working with the right consulting company, right? So really get concerned if you start asking for my childhood address, my favorite food in the school I went to. Yeah, that might be going a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I wanted to add, though, to what Dylan said, too, is the pen tester is very important, but the pen test firm is equally important. Uh, Dylan is unique. Dylan's been pen testing for 10 years. 
which means that he's seen a lot. He's seen, you know, network attacks, system attacks, you know, databases, web apps. He's seen everything. But a lot of the younger pen testers that are, you know, starting out uh, might be very, very good at one or two things. Uh, examples, web applications, you know. Uh, being you know able to find those types of vulnerabilities is very very different than a network pen test the uh, you know selecting a good pen tester is really about selecting a team of uh, pen testers that bring all of those skill sets together so that if Dylan's working on an engagement and finds something that maybe he isn't familiar with somebody else can jump in and take a look and you know I think that uh, that says a lot too you know if you're a single pen tester uh, your capabilities are your own and that's it, right? Yeah. So I just got a really interesting question from LinkedIn of all places. Um, thanks for that, stalker. <laughs> I feel like this is a super obvious question and you guys have touched on it, but um, pen testing. Is this something I do once? Is this something I do a bunch of times? Like what, what, is, what does that look like, you know, in 2020 and as we're looking forward to 2021? Let me start there and I'll let these guys maybe fill in some blanks and things uh, after. Uh, a pen test generally is something that's done on some form of a regular basis, a cycle, right? Uh, usually that's annual. A lot of things uh, in our compliance world are going to tell us that you have to do it at least annually. So, uh, you know, there is that. And when you think about uh, a business, there's a lot more to even security than just pen testing, right? We've talked about all the products and controls and things like that. Uh, we're in the pen test bubble right now. We haven't even talked about policies and procedures and risk assessments, business continuity plans, disaster recovery plans. So I think we all need you know, take a step back at the end and say, you know, there's a lot to security, a lot to IT. This pen test is gonna be a component of that. We're gonna mix it in with other annual audits, assessments, you know, configuration reviews, firewall reviews, all kinds of things that are not necessarily done from an attacker's perspective, you know, bring all of that together in an annual cycle. And we mentioned before too, uh, there is this, you know, idea of doing continuous pen testing too. It doesn't have to be something that just starts and stops in a couple week period. It can go on all year. And I think really that's what, what we're talking about in the world of security is, is having this big cyclical approach where you're doing many different things to monitor and assess and maintain and evaluate your systems and security. And, you know, always getting an extra set of eyes. You know, you can do things great yourself, but uh, oftentimes you bring a, a Kyle or a Dylan in and, and they can surprise you real quick with something you haven't thought of. You know, one thing I want to call out, I, I think Brian, in your previous question that I think you did call Dylan old um, so just want to make sure that that was uh, noted on, on the record. But um, uh, there's a few questions here that I th most of these uh, did get answered in it. Um, how, you know, I'm just, just going to rattle off just in case anybody wants to add anything. But um, how, should I, how should you action the information provided in a, in a pen test? How, how long is the information provided considered valid? I think actually we should maybe get a response on that. And the last question is, is uh, how do you remain secure between uh, pen tests? I can take the first part of that one. Um, how do you action? I think it was how do you action the different things in the pen test? And one of the things we do in our reports that hopefully helps our customers uh, deal with how to actually action things is when we're going through the penetration test, you're, and at the end you're presented with a list of basically our findings. And we rank those, you know, from an informational, which is the lowest severity, to critical, which is the highest severity. Um, and that severity ranking is one thing, right? So if something's very critical, it's, it's important you fix it. But another thing we do is we give you uh, suggestions on how easy or difficult it actually is going to be to, um, you know, remediate a given finding. So if something is, you know, um, gets a moderate for severity but it's a super easy fix because maybe you just have to change a flag in a web application or, or you know, uh, turn off a certain feature in an in a, uh, application or something like that. You know, that's a good way to go after things. Something moderate severity, but it's only gonna take 10 minutes to fix, go knock it out. Something could be a higher severity finding, but could take, you know, months or even longer of effort, might need additional resources, tools, people 
Um, that's something that you're probably going to want to plan for, but it's not something you're going to be able to do in the short term. So, you know, knocking out things that are able to be done sooner rather than later, I think, is a good way to go about things while still keeping the higher severity findings in mind and making sure you have a plan to address those as well going forward.